Hi everyone! Welcome to another Stone Hearth Desktop Tuesday! Two weeks ago, we looked at how to build a basic house in the new builder. This week, let's look at a few more advanced topics. For example, what if you'd like to make a house with two floors? In the old builder, this took us multiple alphas and had a very weird button that put down floor, but only if it was on top of other walls. In the new builder, to make a second floor, select the same room tool you used to create the rooms of the first floor, and draw a second room starting from the top of an existing wall. This room is now dependent on the walls below it, meaning that if you increase the height of the walls using the arrows that appear on selection, the room above will also move. Double clicking on things selects all peer items, so in this case, double clicking on the wall of a room will select all the walls so that you can alter them all at once. Also, if you move the room in such a way that it's no longer touching the walls below, it will turn red to show you that it will not build correctly. To get stairs to your second floor, first use the hole tool, it looks like a window in a wall, to cut out a hole from the floor, much as the eraser tool used to do. Then, use the stair tool to draw a new staircase on the floor below. This may require some maneuvering of the camera for now. Draw the stair tool as long as you would like the stairs to be high, and then use the period and comma, if needed, to rotate it into place. We're currently also working on a re-implementation of the snap stair creation from the old builder, but for now, this provides a solution that works for both freestanding and in-place stairs. The hole tool is actually quite versatile. In addition to holes in floors, you can also use it to cut holes in walls. Select the side of a voxel wall and drag a section you would like to remove. Where you click on the voxel is really important. If you click on the side of a voxel, it will cut in two dimensions along the vertical axis. If you click on the top of a voxel, it'll cut in two dimensions along the horizontal axis. Though this requires some thoughtful clicking, we felt like it was a lot more precise in the long term than two separate tools or a drag tool that attempted to select things in 3D space or a slice tool that went voxel by voxel. Now that you're done with the second floor, you might want to go back and add furniture to both floors. This is a perfect time to shuffle between floors using the new floor tool. While on the subject of placing furniture, I should also mention, a building can involve disjointed pieces so that you can place furniture or even a nice patio outside the building's floor plan and still have this counted as part of the building. If you want to specify that you're creating a new building while still working on the old one so that your hearthlings will build them separately, use the new building button before going to work on a second floor plan. When you're done with the building, you can save it from the purple template button, which will cause it to be saved to a list of templates. But what, you ask, if you want to build something that isn't a building? Well, the voxel slab tool is now a ton more powerful than it was before. As seen in previous videos, it's easy to drag out a layer of voxels. You can also use the pointer tool to drag select a subset of them and pull or push them to create new shapes and holes. As with the hole tool, the surface of the voxel that you touch is important. Touch a side surface and you can drag the voxels in the horizontal plane. Touch a top surface and you can drag the voxels in the vertical plane. Use this plus the new paint tool to create statues or pagodas or bridges or anything else your hearthlings want that aren't houses. When you're done, click the build button. At this point, the game evaluates how the hearthlings should build your building. This process is broken into two steps, the initial calculation and ongoing calculations that happen as the hearthlings put down scaffolding or as you deform the terrain around the building. One new feature we've added is that if the game cannot, at any point in these calculations, figure out how a hearthling should path to the next part of a blueprint so that they can build it, that part of the building will turn red and pulse. This is your cue to help the hearthlings get there by building them a ladder or making the terrain accessible. Because in a game of deformable terrain, it is impossible to know for certain if you absolutely cannot path to a location, it may be the case that a part of the building pulses red for a while and then stops as the Pathfinder figures out how to get a hearthling from here to there. In this false alarm case, the red goes away and you don't have to do anything about it. If you see red pulsing for a long time, however, and you're getting impatient, then it's because the hearthlings don't know how to stand beside the building part to create it, and you should see what you can do to smooth the terrain up or ladder up the side of the building to help them along. There are still a number of janky rough edges that you can see in this editor. For example, as of April 2018, the road, fence, and ladder tools are still missing. We still need to be able to cut holes in roofs, and the stair tool could still use that auto height feature that the old builder had. In addition, we're still solving a number of how to build this building bugs, and we still encounter some trouble when casting rays through things to select the right part of a building. Lots of stuff. That said, we think it's coming together nicely, and we love seeing what things you'll build with it. And that's it for advanced builder topics. By the time you hear this Desktop Tuesday, there should be a version of the builder available on a password-protected Steam branch. If you want to put your QA hat on and help us find all the edge cases where stuff doesn't quite work yet, head over to our forum at discourse.stonehearth.net to get the details and leave us bug reports. See you there, or see you next week!